Well, that's interesting. People had a lot of comments on my last video, so I figured I'd do a follow-up to answer the most common ones. First one was that the music was too loud. So levels have been adjusted, so no more reaching for that volume knob. Second was people wanted to see a comparison between just resin and resin with baby powder. So that's what we're gonna do today. I've modified the model to divide the dome in half. So I can coat one side with resin and the other side with resin and baby powder. And we can compare the results side by side. And for a teaser of what you're gonna see, just a heads up, this video is a bit longer than the last one because there's a lot of stopping at different stages to look at the process close up. I'm going to try to gloss over things I covered in the last video to save time. If you haven't seen the first video yet, there's a card somewhere on the screen that links to it, or there's also a link in the description. Go check that out first and then come back and watch this. For this test I'm using the same setup as last time. Same resin, same powder, same application. I'm labeling which side of the desk is resin and which side is resin with powder. The resin is on the model's right side and the resin and powder is on the left. Before we start, don't forget to put on your gloves when working with resin, or everybody will remind you. Starting with the resin and powder, it applies the same as it did last time. I'm trying a different technique around the detail areas. I'm going to dab the brush over these spots instead of dragging it. My thoughts are it's less likely to drag resin into the grooves. Once done, it's into the curing chamber. The resin and powder looks the same as before. The model has a smooth, even coat. Now for just resin. Right away I can tell it's much thinner. It wants to run as soon as I apply it to the model, and I need to quickly brush it around to stop it. I'm using the same application technique as the other side. Brushing on most of the model and then dabbing over the detail areas. Back to the curing chamber. The first noticeable difference is the side with just resin is very glossy compared to the resin and powder. Looking at the top of the model, the coverage seems comparable. Lower on the model where layer lines are small, both are mostly already filled in. The resin and powder side still has a slight residue, just like last time, but the just resin side is much more, almost like an oily coating. I'll wipe both sides down with some alcohol and we'll have another look. Now that it's cleaned up, the resin and powder side has a consistent matte finish, whereas the resin only side is much glossier. Drop a comment below and let me know what you think of the process so far.
On the resin side, there are signs that the resin collected and built up on the edges of the prints. The resin and powder side is a little more uniform. I'll give the resin side a light sanding with 120 grit sandpaper. Because people commented how much work this was in the last video, I'm putting the actual sanding times up on screen. This portion took about a minute and a half. After sanding, there are a lot of ripples in the resin that show up as dull and shiny spots, which are high and low spots on the surface. Now we'll sand the resin and powder side for about the same amount of time. One thing that is very noticeable is the sandpaper glides over the resin with powder side much easier. The resin only side tends to grab the paper at the start. I'm seeing far less banding on the resin and powder side, and you can see scratches that travel almost the full length of the dome. This is telling me the resin and powder side is laying down flatter and not building up in bands like the resin only side. I'll sand both sides for about 30 seconds and then see what the dust looks like before wiping it off. The resin side has signs of dust being caught in layer lines on the print, meaning they are still exposed and not fully covered. The resin and powder side still has some lines showing, but far less, and mostly only on the top third of the dome. Time for a second coat of resin on both sides and have another look. With a second coat applied to both sides, they look to have their layer lines fully filled in, except right at the top. The resin and powder side looks and feels smooth, whereas the resin only side is still smooth, but there are visible waves in the resin. Another light sanding of the resin side. There doesn't seem to be any dust collecting in layer lines, so they are most likely all filled in. But there are still distinct high and low spots in the resin. If you were to paint it like this with a gloss finish, you would see those waves in the paint reflection. After wiping off the dust, it's much more noticeable. Now to sand the resin and powder side. After sanding, the dust is much more uniformly spread over the print. After wiping the dust off, the surface is pretty uniform with only a few noticeable high spots. We'll add one more coat to make sure the top of the dome is covered, and so everybody can have one more trip back to the curing station. Both sides are very smooth now. No need to add any more coats of resin. Everything gets another sanding. Something else that is noticeable is the resin only side is building up much more and finer dust that is filling the details, whereas the resin and powder side is not having the same effect. Once cleaned up, the resin and powder side is done and ready for a final sanding with a finer grit. But the resin only side still has a lot of high and low spots that need to be cleaned up. Almost leveled out, but more sanding is needed on the resin only side.
That's good now. Everything is level. Time to move to 220 grit. But while I'm doing that, I thought of another way to test the two different methods. I printed out these tiny stairs that have a 30 degree angle and each step is one millimeter tall. I'll use these syringes to place the same amount of each mixture at the top of the stairs and see how it coats the print and spreads out. Then I'll let the resin sit for 20 seconds before curing. First, just resin. Now resin and powder. So here are the results after curing. You can see the resin spread out to the edges of the steps, whereas the resin and powder did not and stayed built up in the middle. In these extreme close-ups, you can see the resin stair edges of each step are poking through the resin, whereas the resin and powder stairs are almost completely covered. This is the main difference between the two approaches. The resin is much thinner so it'll flow off the model. Great if you have a flat surface that you want to self-level, but an issue when trying to apply to a vertical surface. Resin and powder being thicker, it'll cling to the model filling in areas faster. Okay with that done, sanding the dome at 220 is complete. Both sides look equally smooth, and if you didn't see all the extra sanding on the resin side, you wouldn't know the difference. Now on to paint. Since it's the same process as last time, I'm just going to speed through it. Shake, paint, prime, wet sand, prime again. For a paint color, this time I'm going to try a metallic purple. First I'll need to mix up the color, and then we'll add the metallic silver to it. Two coats of paint later, here's what it looks like. Last step is one coat of gloss clear, 
and then some beauty shots. There is one run in the clear coat on the resin side, but that doesn't have anything to do with the resin. So my final thoughts on this, as I said at the beginning, the journey is as important as the destination. Both sides ended up with the same finish, but the resin alone side took much more sanding and effort to get there. My next video will be using resin and powder to finish a helmet print. So make sure you're subscribed if you want to see this process done in a real world use case. If you made it this far, thanks for watching.